Hey Tiasi, this was originally going to be the Austin calling report, though there wasn't enough coverage of the entire event for me to make an entire video about. Though a Guardian player did end up winning the entire event. I'd recommend to follow Marco Victory's articles as I believe he went to the event, so if you want to check out some inside scoops, definitely check that out. But to follow the meat and potatoes of this video, I'm finally going to go over custom cards. Um, I think I'll be making it one... I'll, I think I'll be making a video once a week until the winners have been announced. And I'll go over maybe three or four different leaders. I won't be going over any of their lore and everything as that's just a personal bonus for me. But I'll, as I stated in the past, I'll be rating things out of five stars on their balance, their theme, their synergy, and their playability. And to start things off is Lana Mindbreaker. It's a 5 intellect 40 health scion hero with the effect at the end of your turn once you have drawn cards if there are no scion cards in your banish pile you may banish a scion card from your hand every scion card in your banish pile reduces your int by one as stated i'm going to go over the hero the weapon and either one or two special of their specialization cards though on this entry there wasn't any specialization cards that i can go over instead i'll go over a few of their other cards but with initial thoughts on this hero, I feel like the option of this hero not being forced to banish cards from their hand and then them being a 5 intellect hero is a bit too overpowered in my opinion. You could simply just fill your entire deck with very good generic cards and a few other supporting cards to support this hero and then just leave your leader at a 5 intellect hero. This is very strong. But we'll go over the weapon, Mind Ring. Once per turn, action, one attack. That costs one to attack. So along with a few of the creator's notes, the Scion banished cards in your banish pile will give your cards, your Scion cards, certain effects based on the colors that are in your banished pile. This is a really weird and janky kind of ID that could probably possibly be implemented down the track Though I feel like it would limit a lot of the other th different playstyles as if banishing of your opponent's cards becomes a big mechanic that's going to be introduced. I feel like this hero may be a bit too powerful when it comes to that. As what you could swing with Mind Ring, have Fevra, which adds 3 attack. The effect Mind Thought Freeze be active, which I'll leave right here and lurk which is if this attack hits gain one life the way to balance this is is mind rings effect when the attack chain closes place any banished scion cards at the bottom of your deck i really don't mind this as a mechanic where you're gaining additional advantage over different cards that are being banished it's a very weird mechanic and something very hard to explain how it could be balanced or not so the fact that it's a 5 intellect hero that doesn't really have a major drawback other than your cards being able to gain extra effects. It just feels like a hero that could easily abuse outside mechanics with inside the game itself. And a good example is Psionic Surge. If this card is banished, your weapon attack gains. If this attack hits, draw a card. Then Fevra. Deal 2 damage to the target opponent for each card in your opponent's banish pile. Pure Mind, you gain Thought Freeze at the start of your next turn. Lurk, you may play this card from either player's banish pile without paying pitch costs. Place a banish sign card at the bottom of your deck. That is a lot of text to go over, and as this is an instant effect, that costs two and then pitches for one. If you asked me the Fevra effect where you gain damage equal to the amount of banished cards in your opponent's banish pile is too strong where it's a stacking two damage buff where I feel like the two damage could just be two damage by itself if they have a banished card. I don't like card effects where it's so powerful and not much of a drawback where you could be just dealing 20 damage or 10 damage without dealing without your opponent having a way to interact with it. I do remember reading in the notes though 
that the creator of these cards said that the cards may not be balanced, he just really liked the idea, and I have to agree, I really like this idea. So as far as balance, I feel like this hero is a two star for balance. The main reasons are that one, it's a five intellect hero with not much of a drawback on itself and could just abuse other mechanics within the game. As far as theme goes, I think this really just does sit in a four star as, a, as this scion hero is a kind of like time manipulating hero that I can definitely see s fitting somewhere in the lore. I'm going to rate the synergy at 1. The main reason why is it feels like you'll be competing within your deck if you had to make a deck within these cards where you'll be competing more against for the amount of energy costs that you need for your deck to gain all these effects off. And then playability, I would have to give a 5 star. This deck really would feel like a very swingy back and forth kind of procedurally generated kind of deck where every single game you have is going to be different. So if you want my thoughts on this, one, this hero's effect needs to be mandatory where you banish a card at the end of your turn and then you gain your card effects based on if it was a scion card of th those current energies colors two don't make effects that deal unblockable damage i know there are other way other cards that can deal with damage this way though i believe by having that much of a power boost on the amount of banished cards your opponent has is a bit too much and especially where it could be stacking up towards 20 damage over time don't have anything wrong with the lord i don't have anything wrong with the playability as i really believe i could see this hero within this game sticking with the theme of kind of dark arts we have lento grave scholar for intellect 40 health necromancer hero with the effect when you pitch a card exhume create an, a skeleton with one defense you may use this turkin to block attacks this is a very neat kind of effect where it's not too overpowered where you're just gaining a massive token though these tokens will stack over time but you may need to use them at certain points in the game and the fact that these tokens are blade break means that once you use them they do be destroyed lento's weapon is a tome with the effect once per turn action t resource attack for one attack once per turn effect when you attack with this weapon exhume i really like this effect it's very nice it's statted very well though i believe you could leave it at one mana as it's just dealing one damage and then creating a one block token though i can see where cards that would base around this hero may buff your your hero to enormous strengths so i can see why the creator would have just let this at two and because it is a one-handed tome weapon it would have a side weapon or maybe a shield or an off-handed weapon to buff off this and then you have lento specialization card which is a two pitch three cost two defense x attack attack called marrow shards as an additional cost to play marrow shards destroy all skeletons you control marrow shards gains one attack for each skeleton destroyed this way this really fits the entire theme of how a necromancer would deal damage i think it's statted perfectly well and because your hero ability and your weapon costs a lot and takes a lot of time to gain advantage over time I can see a lot of plays being forced to use their skeletons to block with rather than saving it up for a massive marrow shards attack. So we'll go on to the stars. As far as balance, I'm going to rate this as 4 stars. From the cards that I've seen, the reason why I'm rating this at 4 stars, I believe it could be a little bit more stronger. Maybe marrow shards may start out with a base of maybe 3 attack or 4 attack as it does cost 3 to play and this could take up your entire action. The weapon's perfectly statted, and also Lento himself has a really neat effect. 
not too overpowered and it's just a one block token at the start of your turn you are able to make multiples of these if you're using enough pitching cards for your turn though this will have to count away the amount of cards that you're going to need to block with as well synergy five stars everything that's been laid across i think only three cards really has a lot of style within it i can see multiple cards being printed saying if this attacks if this attack hits exhume or effects based off that and playability i would probably have to rate it three stars it feels like you are very limited on the way that you would have to build your deck when we think about when you're creating a hero you have to think about how viable is it also going to be in limited formats as well where you've only got a 20 health leader rather than being a 40 health leader as far as this hero i feel like it would be a little bit too weak within limited formats and that's why i'd have to rate it as a three star for playability but in summary a very neat hero where it's based on a very defensive kind of play style though it has a major potential to snowball over your opponent and the last hero i want to look at is kylartha corrupted which is a 4 intellect 40 health demonology hero human with the effect once per turn action 2 sacrifice 4 you may pay 4 health rather than pay the resource cost of this action kyla the corrupted gains 3 corruption go again corruption is the value represented as counters on kyla they are removed at the end of the turn and then his other effect, once per turn, effect. When Kyla the Corrupted has three or more corruption, you may flip him. He flips back at the beginning of your end phase. So if you can't tell, this demonology hero is a hero that's based around corruption and being able to gain strength about of the amount of corruption on their, on themselves. And then on his flip side, Kyla the Corrupted this side of Kyla retains all aspects of the front side, has the same hand size, health, abilities, and counters. Once per turn, action. One resource. Sacrifice for attack. Move this card into the chain link to represent the attack. Treat this as if it was a demonology weapon attack. If Kyla has six or more corruption, you may play this action an additional time this turn. If you do, Kyla loses this action until the end phase. These two effects really go in tandem with themselves. I really like the idea where you can sacrifice a part of your own health to gain advantage or being able to take back a swing from your opponent and then putting more damage into it. I don't think it's too overpowered and I think it's a very balanced effect as the health gain can be the amount that you're dealing as well. As far as hero design, I feel like this is the best I've seen so far. There is a lot to go over with this hero though. I can already see different play styles being with this hero where you could play like Scar for Scar kind of builds or playing like extra crazy brews or cards that run along with this hero that deal damage to themselves and deals damage if, there's, if you have less health than your opponent or gain health if this attack hits. There's so much potential for this hero so far. But we'll look at his weapon, which is Seal of the Corrupted, which is a zero attack demonology weapon, two-handed tome. This card gains the following actions and effects based on hero's corruption. Three or more. Once per turn, action one. As an additional cost to play this action, sacrifice three. Your hero gains three corruption, go again. Six or more. Your first weapon attack this turn gains go again. 9 or more, the second weapon attack this turn gains Dominate. 13 or more, your weapon attack has Siphon. Any damage they deal causes you to gain that much health. There is a lot of text on this card though I don't mind it too much as I feel like it's very laid out. It is laid out really well and explains everything to detail. I can see this hero also running with a weapon rather than being this tome where you can play a, a very aggressive build where you've got your hero ability and then you can use a weapon instead of using this weapon. So you can use a very kind of aggressive build. This is a bit more of a controlled kind of play 
I don't mind the ability Siphon, though this is something that should be very cautious on when you're playing, when you're making cards where it's based on gaining health. It would take a lot to get to this point, though that's the kind of point of the entire weapon not dealing any damage and forcing you to use your hero ability and take health off yourself or having to use the, a, the, a pitch 3 to switch over to your other side then attack with your weapon, which is your hero. But we'll go on to the specialization cards. Corrupted Confluence. It's a 3 cost 1 pitch 3 defense X attack Kylar specialization card with the effect. As an additional cost to play Corrupted Confluence, you may sacrifice 5. Doubled your hero's corruption resource this reduce the cost of your next attack action or weapon attack to zero if you paid the sacrifice your next weapon attack gains x damage where x is corruption where x is your corruption go again this is a very overpowered effect in my opinion where this shoots your hero up into the 13 plus corruption and then you're having life steal it's reducing the cost of your hero's weapon attack or first weapon attack. Having the second weapon attack, having dominate. So I feel like this specialization card is way too overpowered. It's essentially a, a two cost average, maybe 14 attack, where you're also gaining health on the amount that you've dealt with dominate on top. An easy way that I could an easy way to just balance this is not to gain the attack on your weapon attack. Though that's probably taking away a lot from this card's kind of idea and aspect. And the last card we're going to look at for the day is Blood Pact, which is a 3 pitch, 0 cost, 3 defense demonology action with the effect as an additional cost to play Blood Pact, sacrifice X. X cannot be more than your current corruption or more than three if your current corruption is three or less your hero gains x corruption if x is three or more go again this is a really neat effect where it's one card that can boost your corruption to the amount that you really want to sit at for the turn it is taking life from yourself so this is a big play and i don't mind that it costs zero as it is taking your own life force I'll have to rate this hero, hero's balance at 4. Currently, with the Corrupted Confluence, it is probably too strong to print. Though if maybe this card's reworded a bit, this definitely could sit around at the 5 star. Though, you could also state that the weapon's probably a bit too strong and just because of the life gain. I don't mind the Dominate, the Dominate's fine, but... You could probably just get rid of the life gain at that amount. Theme, I'm going to rate at 5 stars. There's a lot of love behind demonology and switching your, your hero from one side to the other side and gaining extra effects because of how corrupted your hero is. Sacrificing your own life force to gain effects and everything. It's, it's an amazing idea. Synergy, I'm going to rate 5 as well. There's a lot of different kind of builds you could probably go with this. A bit more of a defensive build or a more aggressive build where you play 10,000 scar for scar kind of effects. You could also probably, as I stated, have a different kind of weapon where your weapon is just a normal weapon and you can swing with it and then flip over your hero. So there's a lot of different kind of ways I think you could build this hero. And as far as playability, it's five stars as well. With this hero, every game's going to be a different kind of game. It's going to be very awkward at some points to use your hero ability where you're kind of dipping into those territories where you don't want to take too much damage, but you're forced to, and you have to be pulled out of those little situations by taking your own life force. So yeah, that's it for the video. I think this is probably going to be a longer video and I'll probably try and shorten it down with other videos in the future. Though thank you to everyone who entered so far, I'll be going over as much as I can, as quick as I can. Though I'll probably be only be lim limiting it to probably 3 or 4 heroes a week. Thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video.